So good evening, everyone. It's very loud, isn't it? I think I need to be that close. Uh, the committee acknowledges the Wadarong people as the traditional owners of the land, waterways and skies. We pay our respects to the elders past and present. We acknowledge all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are part of the Greater Geelong community today. So welcome to the planning committee meeting number 224. Uh, I'm the chair, Councillor Peter Murrahi. Uh, to my left, Councillor Eddie Contell, Councillor Sarah Mansfield, Can Councillor Anthony Aiken, Councillor Belinda Maloney and Councillor Ron Nelson. Uh, we also have apologies from Councillor Sullivan, Councillor Mason, Councillor Grisbeck and Councillor Asher. Uh, I'll introduce the officers. Uh, the Joanne, no, Joanne's not there. Uh, John Rush, uh, Rory O'Loughlin and Amelia Green. Welcome to you tonight. Uh, if there's any conflicts of interest arise, no, if they do, please let us know. So I seek confirmation of the minutes from the planning committee meeting held on the 26th of May. Need a mover and a seconder for those. Need a mover, uh, Councillor Maloney and seconded, Councillor Mansfield, all in favour. Thank you. So the procedure for the hearing uh, tonight uh, will be as follows. The officers uh, will present a brief summary of the uh, written report to the committee. Uh, this panel may ask questions of the officer. Uh, the objectors submitters will detail their concerns to the committee, uh, which is about a three minute time limit for each objector uh, submitter. I think at this stage we only have a, a couple here tonight. Uh, the panel may ask questions of the objector submitter. The applicant will detail their application and respond to any object uh, submitter concerns to the committee and uh, the panel this panel may ask questions of the applicant uh, and then the panel will make a decision. Uh, the decision of this committee is the final decision of the council acting on a, under delegated authority. So we will begin tonight's proceedings and I think uh, Amelia, uh, you, you're off first, so thank you. Can you hear me okay? To start with, uh, very recently the Greater Geelong Planning Scheme was amended uh, and this amendment has moved local policies to different locations within the planning scheme. You, want, I mean, you might have to just go a bit closer to that microphone. Um, so there's been an amendment to the planning scheme very recently and it's moved some local policy to different locations. So it's still in the scheme but in a different, in a different spot. Um, so you'll notice in the planning committee report, clause 2201, discretionary uses in residential areas um, was included as an, an assessment clause. Um, and this policy has now been relocated to clause 1307-1L01 and is now named non-residential uses in residential zones, just to clarify that. Okay. Um, so the subject land we're looking at is currently um, developed in accordance with the originally approved planning permit 975 2018. This planning permit was issued on the 4th of July 2019. Mm. The permit approved the use and development of land for a childcare centre, a food and drink premises or cafe, associated business identification signage, the construction of nine dwellings and a nine lot subdivision associated with those dwellings. The land to the north of the nine dwellings, which contains power lines, was included as common property within the nine lot subdivision of land. Um, the original application was advertised with signs on site and mail to adjoining owners. One objection was lodged against the original planning permit um, and it was from a residence in Tova Avenue the subject land as it exists today contains the childcare centre which was approved. Um, it's fully constructed and operational and the nine dwellings have almost completed construction. The food and drink premises or cafe and open area within the northeastern corner of the site have not yet been constructed. 
So this application is for an amendment to that existing permit, um, and this was lodged on the 26th of August 2021. So the applicant has applied to amend the plan of subdivision to create one extra lot and change the area of common property to its own lot, basically. So um, if you look at page 18 of the planning committee report, you can see that um, where it's highlighted in blue, this is where the nine dwellings are, and then up to the north, you can sort of see the dwellings because there's little lines. They're the little lots for the dwellings. Um, and then all the way up here, where it's just an open blue area, so once again, that's on page 18, um, that has power lines on it. And so originally, this whole area just formed part of the nine lot subdivision, and this was going to be a common property. So as part of this application, they're proposing to sort of slice it off about there, so the power lines are on their own site, and they're not, they don't have to be managed or maintained by anyone in the units, that's what they're proposing. Um, they would like to amend the permit to delete reference to a food and drink premises, um, and they would like to amend condition 68 of the permit to increase the number of children at the childcare centre by 33. So it would be um, 123 children currently, and they would like to increase it to 156. The proposed new childcare building, um, so when you're looking at a childcare, the car parking rate in the planning scheme is 0 0.22 car spaces per child. Um, and so currently the uh, site has more car parking than was required. So this application includes two additional car parking spaces, which brings up the car parking to the number required under the planning scheme. So they would also like to delete conditions relating to the food and drink premises, which are 64 and 65. Um, and they are amending the plans to show an extended childcare centre, the two new car parks to the west of the new childcare building, uh, which are for staff only, and a small associated shed. So if you have a look on... the. TP02 in the set of plans. You can see the existing childcare centre is here. They've got an existing car park. And in the corner here, where the cafe was proposed to be built, they're proposing um, a, a separate classroom, still associated with the childcare centre, more for kindergartners. It's directly linked through a path through the site. And then there's two car spaces proposed off Tova Avenue with a proposed storage shed for the childcare centre as well. <clears throat> um, given the proposed amendments, so the assessing officer then looks at other amendments that may be required following from what the applicant's proposing to do. So the separating off of the power line area from the nine dwellings um, is not supported. Uh, Currently, having it linked as a common property area to the nine dwellings means that it has to be maintained and managed, and you've got nine separate owners that are involved in making sure that happens. If it's separated off, um, we've got an owner might not live anywhere near there. How are we going to make sure it's going to be maintained and um, looked after? So currently, it's got a lot of weeds through it. The last time I went out there, like today I went out there, there was lots of high weeds. Um, Earlier this year I went on site, same thing, and then years ago when this application was originally lodged it was still sort of grass everywhere. So making sure that's maintained and managed is important, so that's why I'm not supportive of separating that land off. Um, we're wanting to include a new condition 1D to apply no standing zones for waste collection days and times to be installed in approved locations within the immediate surrounding streets. Um, this is considered to assist with the issue of garbage collection. It was raised by a number of objections that are impacted by um, people parking in the streets uh, and they not being able to get their bins emptied because the waste collection can't um, get to the bins. 
Um, I'm wanting to amend condition 63 to include some lighting restrictions for the childcare centre signage. The new building, which is um, on the northeastern corner, is quite close to dwellings. So I wanted to just make sure that it was appropriately baffled signage. And we're also wanting to include a new condition 73 for a public open space contribution of 5% relating to the subdivision. So it was left off the original permit in error. So the original planning report discussed that the contribution was required, um, but in error, it wasn't included on the planning permit. So we're wanting to include it now as part of this amendment. So basically, so the land zone general residential zone schedule one, and it's affected by design and development overlay 14. Um, as no part of the development exceeds 7.5 in height, the design and development overlay is not triggered as part of this application. The application was advertised by signs on site and mailed to adjoining owners and occupiers of land. And we have a total of 51 objections lodged against the application. And in summary, the objections relate to the current impact the existing childcare centre operation has been having on the residential streets, um, with significant on-street car parking being taken up uh, along Rollins Road and all the adjoining residential streets, including but not limited to Neal Street, Coronella Street, Ruhamar Avenue, Ferry Street, Tova Avenue and Rollins Road. Um, and the on-street car parking is believed to be staff from the childcare centre is creating traffic impacts by impeding sight lines of oncoming traffic along Rollins Road when you're trying to come out of the residential properties. Rollins Road has a bit of a kink in it um, and you've got traffic coming from the north that's quite fast and then you've got traffic lights up the other end. So and there's a lot of buses and traffic that go along that street. So it's making it difficult to see. Um, we went out on site today and when you're trying to pull out and there's cars parked on Rollins Road, the visibility is quite poor. Um, so that's, and it's impacting their residential amenity, the neighbours in the area. So the, another one of the concerns is the proposal is deleting the cafe and open area, which was shown on the original plans for a public, public use. Um, and many residents were looking forward to utilising that part of the proposal. There's not much in the way of cafes up that end of Bell Post Hill. So, um, but it's noted that if a cafe were constructed, it may be that car parking in the surrounding residential streets um, and an increase in traffic may have been an outcome. Um, therefore, the new childcare building and two staff car parks could potentially create less of a traffic impact than the originally approved cafe. Uh, the application has been assessed against relevant planning policies from the scheme, including the residential zone um, and clause 1307-1L01, non-residential uses in residential zones. Um, so therefore things like education centres, uh, religious and community uses. Um, it was found to be an appropriate use and development outcome for the site. So it's recommended that a notice of decision for the amendment be issued subject to conditions. Thank you. Thanks, Amelia. Uh, have we got any questions from this panel? Got any questions for Amelia? Uh, Councillor Aiken. Through, um, through the chair, um, do, when, um, do we have any evidence to show that when the applicant first lodged the original pl plan that what's being proposed now was um, con considered previously? Um, so in other words, you know, like have we seen something like this previously from the applicant or this is a completely new proposition that they're putting before us? Uh, sorry, I don't quite understand what you mean. So the original application was for a childcare centre and that's been developed and for the nine dwellings with common property and so the nine dwellings have been developed and they're almost at um, completion and on the northeastern corner of the site was where they were proposing a cafe and a, and a public area to sit in, like a park area. And now they're proposing to basically change that cafe to a, a building associated, for like a classroom associated with a childcare centre. I, I suppose I'll reframe the question then. Did, because um, I'm not familiar with the original application and I suspect neither of you and it may be able to be answered by the applicant. Did, did the original application actually proposed a larger childcare centre then and um, um, and it was rejected 
um, or do, do we like even though it's it's not a part of this application, but I think it's important for us to understand that if if that's actually what's occurred, yeah. I don't, I don't believe so. No, at the start of the original application, I was the officer. I was pregnant at the time, so I didn't finish it. I left, have my baby, but um, I don't believe that they did want us, any additional children. And we said, no, you have to reduce it. I don't believe that was the case. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Thank you, Mayor Murray. Um, I was interested in um, how. I know you've got your calculation for the parking requirement um, for ad additional childcare places, but do we have a sense of how many additional uh, st staff would be required um, and how many uh, so to, to cater for that additional number of children or how many extra sort of parks, all day parks would be required um, as a result of that? Probably a question. Um, more for the applicant yep. as to how, how that's going to be managed at the okay. centre. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask that. Um, and given that a lot of the concerns relate to existing traffic problems, you mentioned that we're looking at signage uh, around garbage collection and no standing zones. Are you aware of anything else that the city is doing? And this might, again, not be a question that you're able to answer because I know it's not directly related to the permit, but is the city doing anything else to look at some of those traffic issues? Because they they exist regardless of the outcome of, of this um, amendment. Um, I'm not aware of any, no. So basically the process for getting in touch with traffic and saying, look, we've got an issue um, and having the counters put on the road, so those ropes that go across the road, um, it's separate from the planning process, which mm. is frustrating. Um, mm. But... No, I don't believe there is anything specific happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. I can't tell. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, Amelia, you said you'd been out there a couple of times, one being today. What did you see in terms of um, parking and traffic? Was there congestion? Was, were the streets, Coronella, Rahama, Rollins, were there, were there excessive parking? What did you see? Well, I was out there at 3.40 today, um, and it, it wasn't excessive parking. Uh, there was there was still spaces available on the childcare centre site. Um, there were a lot of cars parked at the bus stop, um, but out of the way. There were a few cars parked in Rollins Road, um, and a few, like one or two or three, on the just at the start of the residential streets off to the east. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't too congested from the traffic coming on Rollins Road to get out, but it was more, there was difficulty seeing with the cars that were parked on Rollins Road. It was difficult seeing when you're trying to get out. Um, I was turning right onto Rollins Road and then went left into Tover Avenue, then turned around in Tover Avenue and then came back out to turn right onto Rollins Road. Um, and I was able to do so without too much trouble. The last time I went on site was a similar time, um, probably about four months ago, and it was a little more congested that day. And I think, you know, you can't take it off the, the one or two days that you go on site. Yeah, I mean, cool. yeah. Yep. Thank you. I oh, know, no, thank you. It's uh, time for questions for the panel. Any other questions here? So, Amelia, the, I guess the, the real basis um, for this app this application tonight is it's 123 uh, places at the kinder and it's an extra 33 sort uh, and two extra car parks. Would you say that that's really why we're here tonight, that those numbers are, are what's brought us here tonight and then, then the traffic concerns related to that? Yes, I believe so. That's what's come through with the uh, objection. So the communities. Um, quite frustrated with the current operations and the current car parking issues and traffic issues and um, having the additional children is obviously going to mean additional traffic and I believe that that's what's come through strongly in the objections, yeah. Did you say there's actually more parking available than what is required? Meets the car parking requirements, so they, they need to have a specific amount, so they need to have 34 car spaces on site in accordance with the planning scheme, and they will have 34 once they construct the additional two spaces. And is it 
a common thought that maybe they haven't been using those parks on site appropriately. Once again, I'd probably put that question to the applicant. Yeah. That's not really okay. my place to say. Yeah. All right. Any other questions from the panel? Okay. Thanks, Amelia. Uh, questions from the objectors. No, oh, sorry. Objector submitters will detail their concerns to the committee. So we have uh, Aaron, is it? Aaron Inkle? Yep, just come forward, Aaron, to the, to the desk. Just introduce, introduce yourself and uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Aaron Inkle, I live at uh, 44 Tover Avenue. Um, so thanks for the chance to get together. Certainly don't see myself as Erin Brockovich, so pretty unusual territory for me here. But um, uh, my wife and I, we have built in Tover Avenue after moving back to the area, living in Melbourne for since um, 2006, where we, before that time we originally lived uh, in Geelong for a period. So. Uh, we were very excited to, to build and get a block of land in Tova and, and build a family property there. So um, it's been interesting watching just the evolution of the development. And this is the first house I've ever built. So really the first development that I've ever watched unfold. And I, I, I mean, the actual of what, what the, uh, is being proposed here in itself, uh, while there's, there is a lot of traffic, while Amelia said that around the the daycare centre, um, and as a father, I certainly have a concern with a pea plater trying to come in and out of that that Rollins um, Tova uh, southern uh, entrance or exit. It certainly was challenging, particularly at the end of last year. There was a noticeable uh, peak in in parking around it. But for me, probably more the th the thing that I think was unfolded was how different applications and how they seem to be identified and reviewed totally in isolation. So the one that's just been approved down at the other, the northern end of Tova with, in Bingley Court uh, has uh, three new dwellings on it. Um, we also are yet to still see two multi-dwelling properties being built in the, the five blocks that are still vacant within Tova itself. So, and I spoke to one of the council officers about the, uh, the uh, application for the northern end of Tova. I can't remember whether it was Amelia or John, but it sounded to me like they really are considered in isolation. So while this particular uh, amendment in itself doesn't seem to be dramatically different, I, I sort of, m my real sense is the traffic issues that are already in place when we've seen a number of requests to develop multi-dwelling properties, they seem to be considered in total isolation. The northern end of Tova has a curve on it where parking would be incredibly difficult. Um, Bingley is not, doesn't have too many dwellings on it, but again, as a resident coming in and out of Tova Avenue, we've got the nine unit dwelling as well as the daycare um, plus some extra multi-dwellings to still come down that end of the street. And then at the Bingley Court end of the, uh, of the street, it's then going to have, you know, potential significant congestion at both sides. So here we sit at the moment, the questions are valid as to what actually, you know, what's the congestion like at the moment. But I don't think, and it doesn't sound like we have a clear picture of once these developments are finished, what's the incremental uh, impact to traffic within the street and me as a resident um, that's my biggest concern is how do we assess you know the the, the, one, the application that's just been approved at the end of Tova that's going to have three new dwellings and on a very constrained corner of a street and being blocked at both ends of the street with you know significant traffic congestion that was really my main concern especially as a father of a of a pea plater but also there's you know, there's quite a bit of tightness within the normal sort of four bedroom properties um, within the street as we speak at the moment. So I wanted to take my objection seriously and I thought it's warranted for me to come and, and share those views. Uh, again, I'm not a professional objector. I just think it's something that should be noted and considered. And it seems like maybe the incremental 
development and traffic doesn't seem to really be projected into the future as, uh, for us as residents who have put a lot of money into uh, you know, family homes and our, our family's future. Questions from the panel for Aaron? Uh, Councillor Maloney. Yeah, Mary, um, I don't have a question for Aaron directly, directly, but I just wanted to query the current speed limit of the street in question that we've, we're talking about. Is it 50 k's? Just a normal. Um, I, think, I think it's 50, isn't it? Normally, okay. normal residential residential yep. street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 50. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Uh, we've got Robert Allen. Robert, need you come forward? Thanks. Good evening, folks. Uh, apologies, Chair, for interrupting earlier. No, you're right. You're right. Um, I'm not a, an official objector, like um, Aaron said, but I'm, I'm a 50-year man from in 89 Coronella Street. 89 Coronella. Yeah. And I've met both uh, Councillor Contell and Councillor Mansfield at uh, the Scout Hall when we had a talk about over there with um, social housing. So if, if you don't mind, look, uh, I've written some notes here. If I read it, uh, sure. rather than sort of ad lib it for you, if you don't mind. Fine. I'd also like to pay a note to Amelia. She covered a lot of points that I wasn't aware of that you were uh, aware of with some of the traffic, but I'll just read my notes for you and then you can uh, belt me with some questions then if you like. Okay? Yep. Um, I note that the council is very much into road safety, e.g. all the bicycle lanes and speed restrictions, humps, diversions and all over the Geelong, including Thompson's Road, Jean Avenue, Myers Street, Jering Up Street, Mirable Street, Boundary Road, St Albans Road, Pernell Road, just as examples. So I know the council's into road traffic. The traffic flow around this bell post area has increased tenfold in the last couple of years, especially morning and afternoon school times. As a note, just for Councillor Contell and Amelia, today wasn't a good day for you to go and view that site because Cadinia wasn't operating. Hence, uh, Rollins Road is the access to the Ring Road <coughs> and Ballarat Road for many schools. Cadinia Junior School feeds into Neal Street and then overflows into Coronel Street and Ruhama Avenue, Ferry Street and so on. Others feeding into the same streets from the aged care lifestyle facilities in Barton Street use it as a shortcut to get onto the Ring Road coming into Rollins Road. Others using this is Rollins Road Primary School, Cloverdale College, as well as the kinder and child mining uh, facilities with all those ch um, children's cars. In the aforementioned local streets, vehicles are also parked near Rollins Road and also at the opposite end of the streets in Rollins Road, op basically opposite a T intersection. It is very difficult to get in and out of these streets, as Amelia alluded to, because of the angle of Rollins Road and cars were parked on the east side. But I note back in when I sent um, a note to the council in, in March the 11th, that uh, when the objection was raised, the council then put a no standing sign so far back legally from the Coronel Street corner, so that traffic wasn't parking right up to the corner. But I also note that somewhere, and I'm not saying that the management did, but staff then didn't park on the eastern side of Rollins Road, they now park on the western side. They don't park in front of the facility. They park from the facility back towards the bus stop. The other cars near the bus stop are actually day people that go and um, buddy shift off to Melbourne and get picked up by their mates. So where the bus sh um, stop is, there's space behind where they can back their cars up off the road well and truly, and they use that as a pickup point. And so. What the, the problem you've got then is when the, the cars of the staff, and there's 25 of them park along the street, and not all the car parks are used in the, in the facility either, as you might ask that. So turning vehicles normally want to come along the, with the traffic flow from uh, Bowat Road into Rollins Road, want to turn into Neal or Coronella. They can't because when all these cars are coming up out of the um, streets from uh, Cadinia Junior, and they're also trying to get out into Rollins Road. They're blocked up because of the traffic lights. They're not obeying the traffic laws, and they're blocking up the street. So if you try and turn down your street at 3.30 in the afternoon or try and get out, they won't let you. 
and um, I implore you, you folks, if you haven't been there at this time or your council staff hasn't been there, to come up and have a look and really see firsthand at 3.30, or it's not so bad, 8 in the morning, but you get shifts in the morning with the nursing homes changing, but especially if an afternoon, the cars flog up Neal Street and up Coronel Street, and I, I challenge you to go and put a, a police car up there with a radar gun and see some of the speeds and see what happens with the blocking of the traffic and how they come out. So my objection here is really about the, the traffic. And in one of the, the points that Aaron raised was when you, you folks grant these planning permits and a part of um, due diligence is to look at your cause and effect. And now you've got an opportunity here to say, well, the cause and effect of this planning permit you gave for the original, which you probably weren't aware of the traffic because it's only since that's come on board that the lifestyle village has actually um, reopened. We've got all this influx of vehicles all coming into this one zone trying to get out through the lights. And it's, it's because it's a real busy intersection and people are trying to get to Bannockburn, they're trying to get to Highton, they're trying to get out to wherever they're going. They can't get out. And, and I think that... Um, with the way council is, you know, into road safety, I think you folks probably, you know, we mentioned before where your departments aren't talking, maybe this should be some, a, a wake-up call for you folks to ask engineering or whoever gets up there, when you make a planning permit, what's the cause and effect of this? What are you? I've had my say. Thanks, Robert. Um, anyone on the panel got any questions for Robert? Uh, the applicant uh, will detail their application. So, Tony, Tony Sinclair. Thank you. Um, I might just, I mean, Amelia set out what the application is. If I can just explain, um, Councillor Aitken asked in relation to the original application. The the, the permit that was issued was for exactly what we originally thought. There was no decrease in numbers. Uh, there was no changes. It was essentially what we applied for, we originally were given permission for. This application came about because my client tried to source a commercial operator for the cafe and they couldn't find one. So they, they put it out for an extensive period. Um, there was absolutely no interest in it. So they couldn't find an operator the childcare centre was completed, the um, units have been completed as well, and the childcare went to them and said, look, this is really successful. There's a lot of people in the area using it. What we'd like to do is uh, have an offering of a kindergarten within the childcare, which is pretty standard. So that's how the application came about. It wasn't a, you know, th this wasn't what our original application was. Um, just in terms of issues, it, essentially it comes down to there's, there's been two main issues raised. The first was the loss of the cafe, and I think it was described earlier as a cafe with some public park to it. But just to be clear, there's no public park. It was a cafe with some outdoor space associated with it. So in terms of the loss of the cafe, I mean, that's, it, it's just a fact that there's no commercial operator, therefore there's not going to be a cafe. In terms of the traffic and the parking, um, as Amelia has pointed out, the, the car parking rate is set by the planning scheme. It's 0 0.22 spaces per child. And whilst to a lot of people they might say, well, that's incredibly low, it's because childcare centres don't operate like schools do. Everyone doesn't arrive at 8.45 and everyone doesn't leave at 3.15. So they come in from the beginning of the day, you know, through till lunchtime and they're picked up any time from around lunchtime through till, you know, the end of the day. So. It provides for parents to arrive, pick up their child and depart, and that's usually done quite quickly. Um, so the car parking ratio that's been provided on site or that would be provided on site completely meets the planning scheme requirements. So in terms of is the car parking sufficient, there's no doubt. It absolutely is because it meets the planning scheme. Um, in, in terms of parking, on Rollins Road. I, I had an appeal at the northern end of Rollins Road a couple of weeks ago. I spent, oh, I don't know how many times I drove past there in the last six weeks. Yes, there's parking on Rollins Road, but 
there's plenty of availability. Yes, there's traffic on Rowlands Road. There's always been traffic on Rowlands Road. Again, there's heaps of availability in there. There's heaps of potential for other cars. It's not at a standstill. So accepting that it's absolutely changed, and I think, as we just heard from the last objector, it's changed for numerous reasons. It hasn't changed just because the childcare centres come here, but there's no doubt the childcare centres brought with it traffic. Um, I think the question was raised earlier in relation to staffing levels, and the expectation would be that there would be um, four staff for the kindergarten if it's, if it's taken up to its full capacity. Um, question was also raised in relation to um, managing that parking. Now, we've spoken to the current operator and asked that they ensure their staff you know, park appropriately, use the car park, don't park in front of people's <coughs> houses all day. Unfortunately, it's not a matter that we can necessarily, or, or I can as a planner, or even the council can manage, in that it's not something that you can impose as a permit condition, because you need to know whose car it is, and you need to be out there all the time monitoring to understand whether the person who's parking that white ute comes from the childcare centre or whether they come from somewhere else. And as we've heard, there's a drop-off and pick-up scenario here to get to Melbourne that's also occurring. I think Amelia noted in her report that there is potential to um, put parking signage up and to restrict parking, and that's certainly going to push staff back into parking in the childcare centre if necessary. Um, but that, again, is a matter that needs to be taken up through um, Council's engineering area um, rather than through this planning permit. Um, in terms of the amendment, uh, the conditions or the, the revised conditions that have been recommended in terms of the actual childcare centre, we don't have any objection to those. Um, the other part of our application that was described was our, the modification to the subdivision. We originally wanted to take the um, area under the power lines out, put it under a separate ownership, accepting the council don't want to do that. Um, the, the requirements being that it actually essentially stays as it is, as common property. What we've asked and what we'd like to see happen is that that common property be allocated to one person because it's easier to manage that land via one person than it will be via a body corporate trying to get nine people to agree to what's going to happen. So we'd originally suggested that the most northern townhouse within this nine townhouse development um, could accommodate or could be associated with that extra land and that would, I think, make it easier for everyone to manage. The only other issue I've got is the there's a requirement in here, and Amelia outlined it, include a new Condition 73 public open space contribution because it was left off in error. Um, appreciate that it was left off in error. Um, it was left off three years ago. It's a little bit late to add a condition in error. Um, and in fact, council can't just add a condition because they forgot it three years ago. Conditions have to be uh, relevant to the permissions that are being sought. So appreciate that you want to add that one, um, suggesting that perhaps it should be left off because it's not something that you can just come back and drop in because it was um, missed. Um, I'm just having a quick look at my notes. I think that's it, unless you've got any questions. Uh, thank you. Tony, any panel members got any questions? No? Yeah. Is uh, Hugh Jean, was he going to speak tonight? Forward, Eugene. Hi, I'm Eugene Sharkey. I'm the the de developer for the area, um, for the childcare and um, for the cafe into the new childcare. Um, look, we're, we're trying to get the, as we were saying before, the cafe, but during COVID that was a bit hard. We had actually had a building permit. We're actually, that was the first thing we were gonna actually do. We had the building permit for that. Um, we we're gonna start that before the childcare, um, but COVID hit, we stopped. 
bench hide a source out a tenant um, and left that for a couple of years and we started on everything else <clears throat> around there. Um, so then um, that's why we thought then maybe to change that. Um, well, I approached the tenant just to see if they wanted to have this because there's nothing else we can really do with it um, until we, you know, find someone, which we have got a tenant. They've actually already got a waiting list for the, the kindergarten. Um, but, yeah, um, I know that I've done the townhouses <clears throat> on the on the street, which are finished now. Um, I know it's a sort of a busy corner, but most of the townhouses have car spots at the back. The nine townhouses have another two spare spots, and um, <clears throat> it is um, plenty of parking for the townhouses, but then what you've got to remember that this street is servicing the houses on one side of the road. So, you know, if the power, the power lines weren't there, there'd be more blocks there. So there'll be multiple blocks there. I know that everyone keeps saying that it's busy coming out of um, Tova onto Rollins Road, but they don't have to use that end. All the houses that are living there, they live down the other end, um, they can go out Bingley Court. They don't have to... If they're saying it's too busy to go out that corner, which I, when I was working there, I used to just go out the other end because it's easier. I don't, I don't. Hello? Yeah, um, I didn't use that corner because it was too hard to get out, so I just go up the other end. I'm out then and that was it. So, yeah, um, that's just my little part, but if anyone had any questions... Any panel members, any questions? No. Thanks, Eugene. No, it's thank thank you. you. Is there anyone else? To, anything to say? No? All right, then. That concludes uh, the applicant, the objectors. So, uh, back to the panel. And um, I'm going to make a recommendation. Um, I move the, the officer's recommendation. So, here's an alternate. So I'll move mine first, uh, Councillor Contell. Uh, do I need a seconder for mine? Mansfield? Can I query, though, is it possible to... This is a part, partly governance sort of question, but is it possible to make an amendment to the recommendation uh, referring uh, issues around traffic management uh, to... You know, not it's not necessarily a subject. Uh, it's not a condition of the permit, but as um, a decision-making body, can we refer it's traffic true. issues to? I think the, you could. Um, yeah. So add another not part of the planning decision. Yeah. But as a separate um, out of the planning committee, I think you could. Yeah. So we refer. We say, um, you know that. Um, Traffic, you know, that, that we would like engineering and I don't know, whatever the relevant what, what, department can is. Can I just to, help you with the wording, yeah. Councillor Mansfield? Yeah. The, the, the committee requests that, um, that the concerns raised um, in terms of traffic issues be referred to the Council's um, engineering and, and um, traffic management section that. with an intent of trying to look for enforcement precisions and other regulations that the Council does have under its control to assist with uh, um, smooth and uh, to assist with um, the local amenity that is required in that um, area. Yeah. yeah. So something along those lines. This is okay with that? That one we can do that uh, as long as it's not a condition of permit. It's not, a, not as a condition of the permit, but as um, part of the decision that we are making, yep. Well, I go back to uh, my original recommendation that uh, I need a, so I needed a seconder for that. Uh, Councillor Mansfield, thank you. Um, look, I'll just speak on it briefly. Um, with, sorry, with that amendment that I've suggested. Yep. Are you happy with that? Yep. Um, these are always difficult. Uh, these um, procedures and uh, there's always, I think, two sides and um, we, I think, are, are bound by um, local policy um, and this application 
um, complies with, uh, with planning policy. It meets all the requirements. Uh, there's, in fact, bore parking um, on site that is required. Um, I understand that the traffic uh, is congested at times uh, around the site, around that area, but I guess it, it is um, all around Geelong. And um, I know that there was only one, one objection when it was a cafe, and now it's a, um, an application for increase in the kinder numbers, and uh, we've got a huge number of objectors, um, 51. But um, it would be my um, recommendation that the uh, responsible authority, having considered all matters which the Planning and Environment Act 1987 requires it to consider, decides to issue a notice of decision for the development and use of the childcare centre, associated business, identification signage and the construction of nine dwellings and a nine lot subdivision at 137 Rollins Road, Bell Post Hill, subject to the following conditions. And there's, look, there's a number of conditions there that um, I um, will move with the recommendation. Um, so anyone else wish to speak on that? I thank you. Um, look, I, I, I think um, Councillor Murray is summarised it well the you know in terms of the planning basis for this recommendation it's um, you know it's, it's hard to see that um, this it doesn't meet the requirements of the planning scheme um, however through the this process and um, certainly through other activities that councils undertaken we've heard a lot of um, concerns from residents in this area about the traffic situation, which um, look may be in part related to um, this childcare centre. But as has been said, there are a whole range of issues around that area, and it, my reason for putting forward that amendment is that this is, regardless of the outcome of this permit, those issues around traffic exist, and they are likely to get worse. Um, whether or not this um, minor change is made here. Um, and I think it is incredibly important that we address those, and that was my reason for adding that amendment, that we actually, as a result, you know, a, a, as a result of this meeting here, we um, ensure that some sort of um, action is taken to, uh, by council officers and the relevant departments to look into what can be done to address the current concerns of residents in that area. Um, but certainly on planning grounds, I, I hear, hear the concerns that have been raised, but I don't know that um, refusing this permit, well, firstly, there's not good planning grounds to refuse the permit, but um, even if we did that, it wouldn't necessarily solve the problems that residents are experiencing now. We need to do something else to address that outside of, outside of this particular um, uh, permit. Uh, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this? Otherwise, I'll, I'll put it to the vote. Then, well, wouldn't we be putting the alternate up before? The we can vote on this, and you can put your alternate up there if you want. No, but because if this gets out of the line, I don't get an opportunity to put okay. the alternate. Okay. All right. Up. So, would you want to move then? Yeah, I'd like to put an alternate yeah. up. Sure. Councillor Contell, you've got an alternate. I need a second. Yeah. Before I talk to the alternate, um, I think um, Councillor Mansfield and Councillor Aitken's um, addition is a good addition. So mm. could I ask that whether this gets up or not, that this, that, that same item could be added to the alternate if, if, if the alternate gets up? I'm working on a, um, the recommendation is to request Council's engineering department to investigate traffic controls in the area, specifically around Tobin Avenue and Rollins Road, with the view to improve the local traffic conditions and assist with the local amenities. That can be in included on both yep. the alternate and the recommendation. Um, so what I'd like to put forward is that um, the responsible authority, having considered all matters which Planning and Environment Act 987 requires it to consider, decides to refuse to grant a planning permit for the development and use of a childcare centre, food and drink premises, associated business identification signage and the construction of nine dwellings and nine lot subdivision at 1 to 37 Rollins Road, Bellpost Hill, uh, on the following grounds. Do I go through the following grounds as well? The, pro the proposal fails to appropriately respond to the car parking and traffic policy uh, clause, 
uh, 1307-1L-01, non-residential uses in residential areas, discretionary uses in residential areas. Current child care centre operations are impacting the amenity of the residential neighbourhood due to on-street car parking demand. By increasing the child care centre capacity, it is likely that on-street car parking demand will also increase, which will impact the amenity of the area. Two, the proposed subdivision will result in an unorderly planning outcome in response to Clause 65 by creating a residential lot that cannot be developed given its proximity to overhead power lines and is therefore not suitable to be created in its lot. I'd just like to talk to that a little. First of all, I want to thank uh, the applicant and the objectors. Um, please don't think that it's um, a show of arrogance that I didn't ask any questions. I've actually tried to familiarise myself with this matter to the best of my ability. Uh, I've spent uh, quite some time up there and I've uh, taken many phone calls uh, from residents. I think the Child Care Centre is providing a, a magnificent service to Bell Post Hill and the surrounding areas. I have no objection to what, um, what's been developed there. In fact, it looks like a very uh, well-developed um, facility and I thank the developer for, for choosing Bell Post Hill for that. Um, however, and I, I cannot ignore, as a ward councillor, that there's been 51 object, objectors. Um, and I haven't spoken to all 51, but I've certainly spoken to quite a number, um, who, who are all um, um, passionate about um, their concerns. Um, their concerns being predominantly, as was outlined tonight, uh, the traffic congestion in the area, um, the way that parking's being used, um, the, the safety, um, the traffic management, all those items that we heard about uh, tonight. To suggest that by adding um, another 33-odd uh, children to the facility, um, four-odd staff, um, it, and, uh, and, and the building uh, and um, traffic that that will generate, uh, to suggest that it's not going to have any further impact on what we've got there today, um, simply can't be true. Um, and so whilst I agree that there is traffic challenges coming from other uh, areas in, uh, uh, in Bell Post Hill and Bell Park, um, there's no doubt though that this is also contributing to that. We can't just blindly uh, continue to approve extension uh, upon extension of developments that are there without trying to do something. This is the residents um, really, really only opportunity to, to gain a voice. Uh, and as such, um, that's what I'm trying to provide them tonight. I know the area very, very well. Um, I know Bell Post Hill intimately. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in there in the last six months, uh, just having a look at how the traffic is moving, uh, both in the morning uh, and, at, and uh, at pick up times. And there's no doubt that the residents have uh, merit in their concerns. So for that reason, I'm putting forward an alternate for the panel to consider. It's up to the panel how they decide to uh, take that. But for my part, um, I'm, uh, I'm putting forward a refusal for tonight. Uh, thank you, Councillor Contell. Councillor Nelson? Uh, I'll reserve my right, Mr Mayor. I didn't think so. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd have to agree with um, Councillor Contell. Um, it is, a, it is a, a real issue up there that the fact that um, the car park isn't being used uh, and everyone's parking around there. And I just looked on the, the, the internet just then, although we have only have access to Google Earth, which is not very updated, um, the road doesn't even exist yet. Um, but uh, Rollins Road does exist and that's a speed limit of 60. So uh, I understand it would be difficult for cars to get out there, um, which is not necessarily a, count, a council thing. That, that road's probably a state road. Um, but again, I can't tell because I don't have that software on my computer. Um, but that's probably a question for, um, for officers at a later date. Um, but I'd certainly support Councillor Contell's. Uh, Any other panel members wish to speak? Councillor Aiken. Yeah, look, it's, it's actually quite an interesting one um, because I'm, um, in pure planning sense, you probably would accept the, the changes that have been presented before you. Um, but this one, 
um, actually is probably who came first um, with this particular one. And, and I think we have to consider that, um, that in fact it, is a, it was and is an established residential area um, and the childcare facility came to, the, to, to that particular area and they have received a permit to operate and the evidence that is before us is that it is actually significantly impacting on the amenity of the neighbouring community. And um, so as a consequence, um, from, from a planning perspective, should we be further impacting on that amenity through ch making the changes to the planning permit that's actually been presented to us tonight? Well, based on the evidence, you, you wouldn't do that because um, there is enough evidence to actually show that um, the facility, although accepted by the community, it hasn't actually lived in harmony with the existing community at that site location. So even though on a planning sense I would like to be able to personally support the application, because I think, um, I mean, my own personal observations of the facility, it actually is very well run. Um, it's, it's clearly successful because of the number of um, children that are actually using the facility. But we do have a responsibility for who came first in this case. And in fact, the neighbouring community was there first, isn't just recently been there, it's actually, Bell Post Hill has actually been there for a very long time as a well-established community. And based on that, um, I, I um, believe that we shouldn't be further impacting on the amenity. And if we do support the changes to the application, which increases the number of child um, uh, care capacity at the site location, um, it would further um, impact on the amenity of the, that neighbouring community. So with that, um, I'm actually um, supporting the refusal to change the existing planning permit. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Aiken. Any other panel members? I'll put to the alternate recommendation to the vote. All those in favour of the alternate recommendation? All those against? It is carried. So the decision of this committee is the final decision of the council acting under the delegated authority. Uh, if anyone is aggrieved by the decision of this committee, they may appeal to the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal in Melbourne. And our staff can assist with that. Just for confirmation, the chair has the final say. So in this particular case, we just need to raise the recommendation again for the I'm sorry, I missed that. Absolutely missed that. Um, so I'll do the voting again. Thank you. Um, so all those in favour of the alternate recommendation? All those against? Brilliant. So the, 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 uh, the, the vote come, goes to the chair? But therefore we would raise the recommendation that's been provided by the chair and all those in favour of that recommendation then determine that the chair has the final say. As okay, the original recommendation from the officers, all those in favour of that? Those against? Chair having the final, um, or the, what do you call it, the uh, final recommendation that the, uh, the officer's recommendation is passed. Thank you, and, um, and I'll go back if anyone is aggrieved, they can take it to VCAT and our staff can assist with that. Thanks very much everyone. This meeting is now closed.